So uh, just to start off, I'd like to get a show of hands. How many people primarily use WordPress as developers? All right, and then how many are primary kind of business end users? Okay, yeah, just, just trying to get a, a feel <laughs> how, to, how to spin this talk a bit. So um, they already made an intro, so I won't bother going through my own intro. So um, my talk is thinking out of the box themes. Uh, the whole point of it is kind of as a marketer and someone who sells web design, I tend to have to make the argument of why someone should use a custom built theme over just buying a cheap theme out of theme forest and running with it. And a lot of times it comes down to performance and other things. And so I'm kind of going to go through that. Um, so as you probably also know, there's no shortage of pre-made themes. You know, you got a hundred sites selling themes. Template Monster has over 1,200 themes right now. Theme Force is like somewhere around 11,000. So you know, you can go buy a theme for 50 bucks and get your site going. Um, so and there's nothing wrong with that. It's quick. It's easy. It's as you saw, it flew by. It's quick and easy. It's the proverbial lipstick on the pig. Um, but a lot of times those themes don't know what you're building, so they give you the kitchen sink. Um, so that makes them often bloated, and it makes them fairly slow. That ever shows up. <laughs> Oops. So as, why do we care? But a fast site, because people like speed. They want a fast site, they want to get there, they want to get their content, they want to move on with their life. Um, and slow kills. Um, it affects your SEO, it affects your conversion rate, it affects your ability to make money with your site. So a few years ago, a couple of different sites did redesigns and they, they did a performance test. Um, Shopzilla did this. Uh, they found that when they reduced page load time from six seconds to 1.2 seconds, they increased page views by 25%, and more importantly, they increased revenue by 12%. So that's quite a lot. Um, Amazon and Walmart also did this redesign kind of back in 2015, and they attributed 1,000 millisecond change in speed to 1% change in revenue. When you're doing a you know a billion dollars in revenue, one percent is a lot of money. Um, but you know most people you're not building sites that are doing billions of dollars in revenue, right? So what does it matter? Well, next month, Google is going to start using your mobile site speed as a ranking indicator. <laughs> so if you don't have a fast site, you're going to be sad, Keanu, <laughs> because it's going to affect your ability to be found. Um, so, like I said, I've, done, I've had this conversation with, with clients trying to convince them why they should do a custom theme. So I was like, okay, let's, let's do an experiment. So what I did is I took a popular theme off of Theme Forest and I rebuilt it from scratch. Just to like, take one of their, their sample sites, rebuilt it to say, okay, here's what you get out of the box. Here's what you get looking the exact same. What's the difference? Um, I'm just going to quickly let's see if I can jump over and just show you the. Um, let me get out of this. I'll bring this over to this. Or maybe. I just don't know what side I'm on. I think I'm actually over here. <laughs> In terms of. Yes. So this is a theme, it's called Bridge. It's available on uh, Theme Forest. It's fairly popular. Um, so, you know, it's fairly nice, you know, fairly basic. Nothing, nothing too crazy, right? Um, you know, the About Us, same thing. You know, a little, little JavaScript counter, you know, a little, you know, nothing too crazy going on. No, uh, no sliders. I've May 2018, the year of no sliders, personally. <laughs> I, I will not build anyone a slider. <laughs> um, because, first of all, they're not accessible, and they're terrible to deal with and responsive. So <laughs> I've made it the... Exactly. So, 
Yes. So I, I've, I've, I've basically, I've, I've said 2018 is the year of no sliders. Um, so I just can't see the other tab. Here we go. This is my version. Um, you can see the brown's a little different because it didn't make accessibility requirements. <laughs> so I, I fixed the, the accessibility colors in it. But it, you know, I just can't see what my cursor is. It looks, you know, about the same. Still got your little JavaScript counter, still got your stuff, right? All works. Um, you know, everything's same little JavaScript effects, everything like that's still working. Um, it took me about a weekend, like 16 hours <laughs> to recreate from scratch. Um, so the tools I'm using kind of to test is webpagespeedtest.org and Chrome Lighthouse. Um, if you're not familiar with Chrome Lighthouse, it's a uh, built-in feature that basically lets you test your site for uh, performance on mobile. So it'll give you a perceived speed index. It'll give you your accessibility uh, score, everything, right in Chrome. You just open up the developer tools, go to Lighthouse, and you can just run your test on your site. And it'll simulate connecting with a, a slow connections and everything. Um, and web page speed test, for the, for the tests, I ran nine tests out of, the, out of the Dulles uh, Center. Um, and I also tested the site running on a, um, a high performance AWS, in, AWS instance and a GoDaddy shared hosting just for, you know, giggles, uh, just to see what the difference is. Um, and surprisingly, the GoDaddy shared hosting performed very close to the AWS. But there's other problems with, with, with the GoDaddy hosting other than just speed. But I, I was actually really surprised that the speed was close. Um, WordPress, I followed you know, fairly standard best practices, installed WP Cache, lazy loading images, um, SSL certificate HTTP2, just trying to get the, the basic speed things that anybody can do done. So, you, so you know, at least everyone's kind of starting at the, something that everybody can do even with an out of the box theme. Um, so once again, here's the, the original theme. Um, like I said, it uses Visual Composer. Um, has about 95,000 sales right now uh, on Theme Forest, and it's got a 4.7 out of 5 rating from 4,800 ratings. So it's, it's a fairly well-rated theme, and it sells fairly well, 95,000 sales, right? Um, and then I rebuilt it using Advanced Custom Fields and Timber. I don't know if you, as developers are familiar with it. It basically gives you the closest you can get to a to an MVC framework in WordPress. Um, and I built it on Foundation instead of, instead of Bootstrap, just because I'm more familiar with Foundation. I like it a little more. Um, but performance-wise, Foundation, Bootstrap, they're, they're on par. There's no real differences in, in terms of if you use it straight out of the box, it, it's probably like 10K difference in, in size for, a, for like a default build. So, um, so Anyway, like here's, we're going to get into the results, the actual experiment. Um, the out of the box theme had a page load time out of web page speed of 5.1 seconds. The custom version, 2.6. So if you're trying to hit that magic three second load time on a desktop, that's right there. Uh, Google Lighthouse, 19.2 versus 6.2 seconds. That's a lot, like, and that's their mobile test, and that's what Google uses for doing their mobile speed testing. <laughs> so how do we get two themes that look visually similar to have such different performance characteristics? Come down to two main things, payload size and payload complexity. Um, so payload size, the actual size of the files, everything, and the complexity is the number of files and the complexity of, and the time it takes to render that page with those files. Um, so if we look at the out-of-the-box theme, it's 2.5 megabytes for the home page. My version was 930 kilobytes. Um, and then in terms of requests, the out-of-the-box theme had 115 requests. To the server, I had 34. So you can cut down a lot by, by knowing what you're doing. Um, because one of the things with, a, with an out-of-the-box theme is they don't know what you're building with it. 
They give you everything. And especially Visual Composer. Visual Composer has a lot of JavaScript dependencies. That's where you get 115 requ requirements or download files. Because no matter whether or not you're using a plugin on the page, it's loading the JavaScript. With uh, advanced custom fields, I can create my own blocks, and I know what JavaScript is going to be needed on that page and only load that JavaScript. So basic comes down to ba building yourself a well-tailored suit. Um, so if you let's go a little deeper into the payload size. So that 2.5 megabytes of content kind of breaks out this way in in uh, you know what's being served. The custom wasn't much different actually, like in terms of ratios, but the size is a lot different. Um, and so as I was building the site, I noticed that you know. It uses only three three column types, uh, or four column types, like a full width, a, a six column grid, like, and then a five and a seven. So why am I loading all the whole bootstrap grid, right? I will just use a mixing, create those three column types, couple of, it's now I only have three different designs, right? And then I just create those options in advanced custom fields. I want to even split, I want a 60, you know, 70, it's a golden ratio split with a bigger on the left and a golden ratio split with the bigger on the right. Um, I also optimized a little bit of the size of the CSS because um, I used a flex-based grid and it's using an older version of Bootstrap, which is a float-based grid. So you, you do save a little bit by going down to Flexbox. Um, and then the JavaScript weight, once again, um, they had 550 ki kilobytes of JavaScript, I had 230. And this unminified, uh, or sorry, that's a minified uh, thing. And that's, you know, I wasn't even trying. Like I said, this isn't a weekend. Like, you know, like this, is, this isn't even trying hard to make it smaller. Um, and once again, they don't know what you're building, so they give you everything in, in a theme. I know what I'm building. I only pull, pulled the JavaScript libraries I need. I run through the, the template and advanced custom fields. I say, oh, well, you're not using that, that block, so I won't sell that JavaScript. You could even do it if you wanted to with the CSS. You could totally componentize it and just say, I'm only loading these CSS files. Um, had a little bit of a larger HTML weight in, the, um, in my version. Not much. It was like 3K. Um, but image size really changed. You had 1.6 uh, megs of image versus 609 kilobytes of images. So. Because, once again, I know how, what the max column width I have set to, I can make sure I'm never serving an image bigger than that. So when an, when an image is being dumped into a full column width, like a full page width, I know, okay, well, I, I'll go 1,600 pixels, and that'll be the maximum size I'll serve. On a two-column one, well, I know the maximum width for a column is never more than 800 pixels. So no, I never serving an image more than 800 pixels. Same thing with when there's a three column in there. Like I know it's never going to be bigger than this, so I'll, I set my maximum width. And then if you want to get really complicated, you can do uh, you do responsive images. So on mobile, I'm serving even smaller images because I know it's never going to be bigger than a certain thing. And I and a lot of themes I find even to this day don't use responsive images. Um, so and then now with the payload complexity issue. So because you're loading a lot more JavaScript and you're loading a lot more CSS, it's taking a lot of time longer to render your, your, your pages. Um, when I did my CSS audit, that's the difference in the amount of rules between the out-of-the-box theme and my theme. So the time to, lo to render a page is drastically different. Like you have, you're serving 11,000 rules that are all being ignored. I only need 506. <laughs> That's a crazy reduction in, in complexity. Um, so how does this affect the bottom? Like, how does this affect the bottom line? As a website owner, as a business owner, how does this speed affect your bottom line? Right? So we'll go back to our Google Lighthouse score, right? 19.2 versus 6.2. Google has a tool called Think with Google. Uh, in it, they have a uh, a mobile performance calculator or a mobile uh, cost impact calculator. 
Uh, it'll be basically put in your, your site load speed at mobile, and you put in what your uh, average visitors a month are for mobile, what your average conversion rate is, and what the average deal size is. And it'll tell you how much money you'll gain a year by speeding up your site. It's got a slider. You can say, if I speed my site up to this site, I know how much money I'm going to get. So I used our values from the experiment. So these are kind of, I took these from kind of, these values from a client, okay? So they're getting 5,500 mobile visits a month. Their average deal size is $5,000. And their average conversion rate on mobile is 0.1%. That's the amount of extra money they get by, by speeding up their site from 19.2 seconds on mobile to 6.2 seconds. That more than covers the cost of the extra development time to develop a custom theme. Um, but you think, okay, well, I'm not a big company. That's not my average deal size. I'm, I'm doing e-commerce, all right? So here's like a, a, another kind of average site. You're doing like, say, you know, 1,500 visits a month. Um, your average deal size is 150 bucks. And your conversion rate's a little higher because, you know, it, it's a lower price point, right? You're still making six grand extra by, by speeding up your site by that percentage. So that's one of the best business cases for it. Um, depending on, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> but there's other effects, right? SEO. So page speed, once again, it's, a, it's an important ranking factor. It's becoming more important next month. Um, and one of the, the better ranking factors is time to first bite. Uh, less complex site, you're gonna have a faster time to first bite. So in any SEO strategy you, you implement, the first thing it will do is they will add, audit your site. They'll audit your speed, and they'll audit your text to code ratio. Once again, with the smaller payload, your text to code ratio is better. Um, the out of the box theme comes in at 5% text to code. So it's, it's mostly code. Um, the custom theme came in about 20%. So you have a much better code to text ratio. It's something an SEO expert's gonna look at when they're looking at your site to do SEO. Um, user experience, so once again, faster site, happier users, um, better conversions. And then you get, uh, here's the, this is out of like the actual out of Lighthouse. Um, so this shows your perceptual speed index of the two sites, that's how fast it feels and if you look at the difference, the out of the box thing feels twice as fast. You get your interactive much faster before you are on, uh, as opposed to the or the uh, the box. So once again, faster you faster response, um, happier your your perceptual speed index uh, is eight versus seventy nine. You can't compete. Um, accessibility. Is, is another issue which previous talk was talking about. And a lot of the, a lot of the themes on ThemeForce right now aren't accessible. Uh, color contrast is usually wrong. And sometimes you can't fix certain color contrast issues. I find a lot of times I'll implement a custom or out of the box theme and I'm fighting it. I'm, I gotta you know, use important tags everywhere. And as a, as, as a front end developer, no one wants to use important. <laughs> That's it, right? And then that time, yeah. And part of that comes down to because they're using Bootstrap out of the box, right? And Bootstrap 4 is much better. Bootstrap 3 was a very hard, and Bootstrap 3 was even worse for having to override styles to, to customize. Um, so in accessibility, the out of the box theme scored an 83 out of, on, in Google, mine scored 100. Because once again, I, I build from accessible from the ground up whenever I can. Um, and a lot of that comes down to just the way the icons are, are rendered, because they'll use they'll use icon uh, theme like icon fonts or whatever, or I replace those icons with SVGs and inline titles, and so that makes it you know responsive. Color choices once again, like I said, I darken the brown because it didn't meet contrast ratios. Um, and then there's a like a long term security and maintenance uh, benefit. Um, when you buy these out-of-box themes, they have a lot of plugins, and you're basically putting your long-term maintenance in the theme developer's hands. Because 
So you buy a theme with uh, Visual Composer in it. Visual, uh, WordPress gets updated. This is actually a, an issue I'm going through with the site client right now is WordPress gets updated, it breaks the older versions of Visual Composer. You update the new version of Visual Composer because you have a license, it breaks the theme. <laughs> so you can't update this client site without rebuilding, say, 100 pages. <laughs> and, no, it actually breaks the yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then, so then there's other plugin dependencies, like you are now dependent on other developers to make sure you can update your site because I'll have, uh, a lot of times they're not as critical as I would be in terms of what plugins they use by default. So once again, like core updates or plugin updates, it breaks the site and you got to roll back and that means you're using an, uh, an outdated version of WordPress core, you're using an outdated version of a plugin just to maintain the site to be servable. So, you know, and uh, while if with a custom theme, like a good developer you have a relationship with, you keep them on maintenance contracts and they'll make sure it's moving forward and keeping up to date. And a lot of times with, those, with a custom theme, you're not doing as many crazy things. So a lot of those plugins, a lot of those security holes are coming from, from interface things that they're doing, but if you're using ACF, it keeps up to date. It doesn't break. It's fairly good for backwards compatibility. So if you're using ACF to build your sliders or, or other things like that, you can usually be fairly safe once you update ACF. It won't break it. <laughs> and so, you know, once you build it all together, it's, oops, oh my, it went on my last slide. That's okay. It's, you know, 100% counter is approved. <laughs> So I thought I'd just open up to questions because um, I know this is kind of a dense, crazy topic. Um, Have you tried this same experiment where you didn't use foundation and didn't use um, I, I, could, I can do it without foundation probably pretty quickly as well. I use I used foundation more in terms because I just want to get it done in a weekend. Yeah. Um, I haven't I haven't retried it. Like I I, I know that because even with foundation I didn't use um, I use the mixins. So I didn't use straight foundation. I just like, okay, I, I need these three column widths. I will just create custom classes with those three column widths. So I, I reduced the size a lot there. But yeah, I, I, totally, you could make it even a lot smaller if you went with... with Yes, yes, two seconds is, is, is the, the bare minimum. <laughs> like, you, you start getting impatient. <laughs> yeah, I know what, I was building stuff that ran at 9600 watts, mm -hmm. an enormous machine. Two seconds was considered, considered very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And we were told, I think, three quarters of a second. Yeah. When you wanted it to be back. Yeah. It's, it's not supposed to send a lot of data. No, but. but people will put up huge pictures. Your average, yes, your average page size right now is about two megabytes. Yeah. Right, and you saw mine was 930k, <laughs> and it looked exactly the same. There's people in the third world who are still running on 56k. Models. Yep. Yep. Anybody else? Uh, and why do you prefer foundation? Uh, it's it's more history. Like I said, older versions of Bootstrap, you had to do a lot more like important tags and things to override default styling, and so I just started using foundation because it needed less of it. Um, so I was doing a lot less overriding with the older versions of Foundation than I was with older versions of Bootstrap. So I'm just more comfortable using now Foundation than Bootstrap. But you know, it, both, like I said, I've I've checked performance stats on both and size stats, and they they they're within a couple of k of each other and a couple of milliseconds of each other. Their performance is pretty close. Do you find that the clients kind of sort of like bastardize your option, like after you delivered, because now they you don't have the same mentality, they start adding the plugins, they will put the slider. They do to uh, most of my clients now are on maintenance contracts, so I'm, we're maintaining the site for them. So, but the beauty of advanced custom fields is that they can't do custom layouts. I I said here are you, and realistically, most of the time, once you've kind of sat with a client and worked through their content, they're only using kind of like three or four variations on a block, right? So you even with a, with using something like a visual. Composer, you can give them those pre-made blocks and give them shortcuts anyway. Um, but with advanced custom fields, I'm like, okay, pick pick one of these five blocks and use it, right? 
and then they, they don't have as much option to bastardize. <laughs> yeah, because it's not their job to design the site, right? I, I will give them, here's the best way it's going to look. Use these. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of sites out there right now. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so he was asking if there are, are there any recommendations for sites or, or things to, to help develop themes. Um, I also like, um, I've been promoting a lot, is, is Canada Learning Code. So Ladies Learning Code. If you just need like a good introduction, basic introduction to like theme development or even writing HTML, CSS, their introduction to HTML, CSS, and their intro introduction to theme development is a really good starting point. Uh, Canada Learning Code. It, it's, it used to be the Ladies Learning Code program. Um, and it's one of the best, in terms of the way they teach, I've taught a couple of their courses, I've mentored a bunch as well, and I find it's one of the best beginner intro courses to anything. And I, I tell most of my clients, if you're going to be managing a website, take their intro to HTML and CSS, because it'll at least give you enough knowledge and enough confidence that you can at least talk about it intelligently if you do need help. So, and, and their WordPress theme one is actually very good as well. Um, but other than that, like it's, you know, CSS tricks, uh, you know, uh, Lydia.com, they're all, they're all really good. Um, Linda, Linda, that's what it is, yeah. So, um, anything else? Uh, my usual, well, yeah, so, so am I building uh, the site from the ground up using WordPress or am I writing it through WordPress? Um, my usual workflow is I start with a content map and a content outline from the client. I build them wireframes based on that. In HTML, I do it in browser. I then style it and give them static HTML mockups. Uh, so it's, it's responsive the whole way. And then I turn it into a theme at the last step. Yeah, so, so and, and that's kind of a fairly standard way, I think, of working for most developers. Um, and you just kind of keep building on, so that way you have client input at all stages, and you're not kind of, here's something, and they're like, oh, we don't like that at all. <laughs> so, yeah. So the theme that you end up with, which you had there, mm -hmm. can you still make use of the WordPress, can you still make use of WordPress, WordPress plugins? Yes. So with that theme, um, he was asking if we can use uh, regular WordPress ecosystem. And yeah, with that, a normal short code stuff works. Everything works with advanced custom fields. You can dump any content in. Uh, there's usually a plugin you add to help with search for it. There's an advanced custom field search plugin that helps just to make sure your text, full text search is working. But yeah, you can copy paste you know, any short code in, install any plugin, and it'll work. That's, that's the other benefit of it. Uh, go ahead. Do you have any tools that you use to check that your things are compatible with or not compatible with up to WordPress their standards? Um, what do I use to you to check if my themes are are up to WordPress standards? Um, it for me, it just I've been doing it long enough that I don't do too much checking anymore. Um, and like I said, I use Timber as a base. And what Timber does is gives you a uh, templating language. So you're using you're using um, mustache or twig, yeah, as 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 your basis. So it's just feeding your variables into a a twig template parser. Um, so that way, once again, your your um, your your visual like your your, vi your visuals are separated from your business data. Um, and the other thing I like about uh, uh, Timber is that I'll ne I never have to write a, a menu walker because they have them built in. <laughs> yep. So here's a guy that can be on content creator, yep. and that's all I've done for the last 10 years. I've got piles of stuff, and it's good, and it's ready. But you know what? And I thought, OK, maybe I'll get a theme for it. It's a lot of theme. Yep. You know, everybody says that's the one that we But now that I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, you know what? If I do that, maybe I'll have to backtrack a little while. And and start again and do whatever, because I will get wise with it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get involved in this, but maybe 
judge should be talking to someone like yourself or another person who does provides this service, and then just slowly work from there, as mm -hmm. opposed to starting with a theme like that's already put to say out of the box. What do you suggest to a guy like me who has content and who's going to get really involved? And, and, and I think fairly large, maybe. But the thing is. Uh, so the question is, um, is as a content developer, someone who already has a large content repository and they want to update their site, should they buy an out-of-the-box theme and just reskin it, put the lipstick on the pig, or should they talk to a developer? Um, one thing I can tell you is um, a lot of the cost in developing a new theme is the discovery portion. So it's figuring out what the client likes and how the content works. Um, like I said, I put that theme together in 16 hours. It's because I knew what the content was going to look like, and like I didn't have to do all the discovery kind of thing. Okay, does, do I need do I want red buttons or do I want blue buttons? Like all that that back and forth you do with a client that little to figure out what they like and what they don't like. Um, and one of my recommendations is to clients when we're doing rebuilds and they've already had an out of the box theme. Like, okay, if you're happy with this theme, we will rebuild it as a custom theme, updating it slightly, saying, okay, well. We'll use it as a starting point. We'll, we'll update to new coding standards. We'll update the, the styling to be a little more modern, but we won't change too much. Because like, you, you don't want to totally change your site. Well, don't site. You don't have a site. OK. Oh. Um, yeah, then the best thing is talk to a developer. See what they'll charge you. Because like, the, the price difference is, is significant, right? Like, out of the, building a site from an out-of-the-box theme, depending on the size, you're, you're looking at two to five grand is what I would charge using an out-of-the-box theme. But as soon as you go to custom, you're looking at 10, right? Because, because there's a lot more back and forth in the discovery section, right? Trying to figure out what we need the site to look like, what, how, we, how the content needs to lay out, that there's a lot more back and forth there. Um, so, so, yeah. But, and, but that's why I bring up the, the testing pool, because if you know how much money you're making off it, you look at that, you can say, okay, this is going to save me or cost me this much in revenue. So, you know, you, you can make a decision, right? My, my problem is I've got to make enough money before I can buy it. Right, and, and for most people, like, I'm like, do the out-of-the-box theme right now, start somewhere, because it's better to start the somewhere with something slow than it is to not do anything at all, and then just move on when you can afford it. What theme is the theme to start with? And you're, I mean, you want to buy it, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> But, but that, yeah, and that's, that's it. And a lot of times that's what I'll do for a client is I'll just walk them through. I'm like, look, if you can't afford me, I will happily, I'll, I'll take a couple hours. I'll look at your content. Yeah. I will give you some suggestions because a lot of times I'll give a price to a client and they'll go, I can't afford that. And that's my cheap price. <laughs> so, so I'll go, okay, look, I will take an hour or two. I'll look at your content. I will give you a bunch of, one of these three themes will probably work for you. Six months later, they come back. They go, I can't get through. I don't have the time to deal with this. <laughs> right? Because it's what the, okay, yeah. Money, just... No, but, that, that, but that's it. Is it like a lot of times I'm like, I can give you themes to use and say you use this theme, but like there's still a certain amount of design knowledge and tool familiarity you need to actually be productive with it. Right? Like you can sit there. Can I pipe into yeah. that? Just don't be a visual composer because it'll leave a bunch of short code. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yep. Because it's now, what is it, something bakery? But yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's number five. Yeah. It's changed to the point yes. where you can't even update. And I really don't know what's going to happen when five comes out. No. Yeah, I was late to visit their license, sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with those things. Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I can't find any documentation on what their upgrade strategy is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that tells you one thing about Visual Composer right there. Like, I can't find any documentation. What is your plan for for WordPress 5 with blocks. Yeah. Uh, have you tested it out and how is it impacting on your uh, page load times? And I haven't tested doing the blocks yet as a, as a, like a speed test. Um, as a developer and a designer, I'm looking forward to it uh, just because moving to a component-based model is uh, where, where design is moving anyway. So it makes sense as a designer and developer to do a component-based, you know, you know, GraphQL thing. So, yep. One project that I'm involved with, we refer to the use of fine 
ECF and a couple yep. of other things for these blocks. I I like MVC personally. That's that's my <laughs> thing. I, I I like to keep my code separate. So that's that's just me. What is your uh, build tools? What are your build tools? Um, in terms of what are your, like, like I said, I, I like to do. Yeah, I like Foundation. Um, it uses Webpack out of, out of the box um, for for its front end build. Um, other, other than that, like I'll do stuff because I'm on a Mac. I'll, I'll use CodeKit sometimes just to let just have a a, a, a GUI for it. Um, you know, most of the time I just develop in MAMP and push it to a, a dev server. And um, right now, my big problem with WordPress is it, it needs a better migration process to migrate from dev to thing and and it needs draft it needs draft changes <laughs> because clients like they want to make a change to your page but they don't want it to be live yet once a page is published <laughs> it need, it needs a staging so but all right Um, with the CDN, you're going to get, you might, oh, sorry, uh, we're asking if, if, <laughs> if using a CDN when using an, uh, uh, a framework is beneficial. Um, it can help um, with, but I find with HTTP2, a lot of that paralyzing of, of requests, it negates that CDN ability, like that, that benefit you used to get, other, other than you're getting the, the latency benefit. Which, because you're you're serving from a closer server, um, but I find even with 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 jQuery loading from a CDN, I'm like I'm surprised at how often it's not cached on a on a user's browser. So I just like I said, I just run all my servers with an SSL certificate, HTTP two, and paralyze those requests. I find that's usually enough to to you know compensate for any speed difference. So. Anyone else? Yeah. Back to the on uh, reducing the amount of let's say CSS mm -hmm. in JavaScript. Do you know of any good cross reference tools that will tell me what CSS is used and what is not? Um there are a couple of tools they'll scan your site and find your unused CSS that you can run it through. Um, I'm trying to remember what what they're called off the top of my head, um, and they'll like, but they will. There are a couple of tools that will run your JavaScript and CSS, and you just uh, there's even a couple of Webpack and and Gulp based ones where you can run it from the command line, and it'll run through your templates and your JavaScript and look for CSS like for for classes and see if they're used or not. Yeah, I, I I can't think of one off the top. I can't think of a tool off the top of my head that will like look for even frequency of use. It's like, that's where a cross-reference tool would say. Yeah. This piece of CSS is used in this piece of HTML. Yeah, and it's it, it there's three instances or four instances or whatever, so you can see if you you should refactor and and yeah, I I I I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but. So the question is, is if you have a, a client who already has an out-of-the-box theme and they want you to mitigate any speed issues, would I tell them to start from scratch or would I actually try to do something? I would try to do something because there are things you can do. Like, Because a lot of times these sites won't be running on uh, a site with an SSL certificate and HTTP2. So I'm like, okay, well, let's first step, let's upgrade your server to, to Apache 2, put an SSL certificate because what that'll do is with, I don't know if you're familiar with HTTP2, um, it will paralyze requests. So in a traditional HTTP 1 model, all your requests happen one after the other. Under HTTP 2, anything from the same domain can be served par in parallel. So, so that means, you know, instead of waiting for the CSS to fully download for you to let down the JavaScript, it's downloading in parallel. And that, that does a lot. Um, a lot of times, they won't even be running a cache. 
So I'll, I'll run a caching plugin and just, you know, WP Cache runs a static version. That does a lot. Um, there's not a lot, like if you already have Visual Composer, there's not a lot you can do to reduce its JavaScript footprint other than combine and minify, like run a plugin to combine and minify, which, you know, it, it also helps. Like there's, there's stuff you can always do to speed it up, but... Uh, well, HTTP2 will only run... It, the problem is, yes, HTTP2 will only run via SS, uh, via secure connection. So you need the SSL certificate to run Apache 2.4. Just as an aside, I took note of this, that most of the URLs that are being put up on the screen for the presenters, they're all going to be HTTP, and I'm surprised by that. Mine was HTTPS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, because like I've upgraded all my servers to run on, you use Let's Encrypt and just run a free SSL certificate at least. Yeah, I think a lot of them also are coming from local hosts. Mm -hmm. And running SSL on local hosts is even not it, it never works well, yeah. Like MAMP does not even, like, you always get a warning that it's not secure even though you're running an SSL certificate and self signed and, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So do I use a separate program to minify my images because I got the, the size? Um, there are a couple of decent plugins that uh, for WordPress that like Image Optimum for one. Um, is it Image Optimum? There, there are a couple, uh, Smush It uh, will do your image compression, uh, but I find a lot of it is uploading properly compressed images to begin with. So I do a lot of education with my clients on how to save images out of Photoshop for the web. Yes. Um, and just, could, because like, it's one of those things, like, with the plugin, it just, it's gonna apply a bulk compression, which, you know, every image is gonna be different. And like a header image, you may want less compression because you want to look better. Right, uh, so I, I always kind of do a lot of education and training with a client, saying, "Okay, when you save it, use you know use a save for web. Watch the slider and see where it breaks down. See if you're if you're happy with it. Because like if you have a client who's a photographer, they don't want all their things artifacty, so they're going to be a little bit less tolerant of of compression." <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm there and there. So, did you? Just on that note, can you say a bit about, um, you said a lot of sites aren't using responsive images. Yeah. I think there are a couple of, of plugins that will responsify, sorry, uh, asking if, if there's an easy way to deal with image, themes that aren't using responsive images. And I think there's a couple of plugins that will mitigate that. Yeah, but it, but it still it tends to usually deal only with what's in the content field, and so depending on how the shortcode processes that image, it doesn't do it, and and that's so you're kind of <laughs> out of luck. Sorry, which one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. PageSpeed Insights will give you a zip file of your images compressed, but like I said, I, I tend to re recommend a much more hands-on approach, only because, like I said, I deal with a lot of clients where the image is is really important. Like I have clients who run f art galleries and and things like that, so the image quality is important. So anything that does like a bulk. Like compression doesn't work. It'll be better. It'll be better than if you do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like if if you if quality isn't as big an issue, where you can get away with slightly lower quality images, anything like smush it or using uh, something that bulkly downloads the images and uh, optimize them for you is, is is good to use. So, but it, it really it's on a case by case basis. So. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, so asking how I would optimize an image. Um, generally, I will save for screens out of Photoshop. 
um, and then I will adjust the slider and look at the quality difference because it'll give you the side by side of here's the original image, here is the optimized image, and as you adjust the slider, you'll you'll see how much artifacts you get. Um, and then like other just basic things, just making sure you save the JPEG as progressive helps. Um, things like that help. Uh, there's a couple tools for the Mac. Uh, there's an image optim plugin which you can just drag and drop your images in and it'll do some basic compression to pings and JPEGs. It's called image optim. Um, I find it's really useful and it doesn't, it doesn't add too much artifacting. So, so ones like that help. Uh, I just don't know if there's a PC equivalent for it. Um, then with going with that one, are you just using the source images that you upload versus using the media library image resize or uh, crop um, asking if I if I if I resize and crop in the in the in the media library if I do it I do it all from the, from my desktop because uh, because that way I know exactly what I'm getting like I don't trust the I don't trust uh, so you know theme image stuff on there but then <laughs> no. content your users providing yeah are you still allowing them to do that or are you just I well I don't stop them from it I don't stop users from doing it the way they want I will show them here's what I think is the best way for you to do it and like if if they're like a startup or like they're not they're not image you know dependent, dependent. I will show them yeah like just use the you just use the in, in browser tools and use these tools because I know they're not going to notice the difference but when I'm talking to a client as a photographer or an art gallery I know that the quality of the image is, is paramount so I'm like okay here use this tool try to get your image size to like try to get your header images down to say 150k or what like I try to give them even size like you know play by ear like look at the image and and look at the quality image but try to hit these size targets just to get so they have a at least a baseline because yep that time that's time i guess i can yeah yeah but also also like a white image versus a, a, a image with a lot of black is going to compress differently because white is two five five two five five two five five or in hex or whatever. It's still it's a bigger number than zero comma zero comma zero, and you'll see a different compression ratio between an image that has a lot of black in it and an image that has a lot of white. Yeah. So so yeah, the the color value actually matters. <laughs> so if I'm, I'm happy to talk after, uh, I'm getting I'm getting the 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 old. <laughs>